in 2013, I was diagnosed with a 3.5 centimeter brain tumor. They had to dissect the tumor off of my facial nerve, so I knew that I was going to have a 50-50% chance of either having my face to work or not to work. I knew that I was going to wake up deaf in this ear, and I knew that they were gonna sever off my right balance nerve. As soon as surgery was over, I woke up with tinnitus, which I did not know that I was going to wake up with. My personal tinnitus sounds like shh all the time. So in my deaf ear, that's what I hear. There are certain things in the gym that I can't do. There are certain events that make it very challenging for me, especially if I go to a concert with friends or if I go to a loud restaurant. Sometimes I just want to leave because I can't, I can't hold on to what people are saying, and it's very frustrating. I do a lot of sidesteps. There's a lot of things that I can't do. If it is 100% dark in a room, um, I will fall. I will absolutely fall without that balance nerve. I remember in the very beginning with Dina, just even teaching her how to uh, squat properly or even deadlift properly, we always had to have like a point of reference, had to put my hand on her back to help center her uh, because of the lack of acoustics on one side. Getting her to even lunge was a very big challenge. I remember when we first started lunging, we had to keep her against the wall just so she could constantly put her hand off to the side. I decided that since God blessed me with life after this 11 hour brain surgery, that I was gonna show people that even though life throws you curveballs, that you can do whatever you set your mind to do. So how this whole thing started was Dina came to me and she was celebrating her what I call her brain anniversary. You know, it's been seven years since she had this brain tumor removed. Every year during my what I call brain anniversary, I celebrate it in different ways. This past year, I sent Travis an email of a lady's legs that I was like, hey, for this brain anniversary, what would we have to do to get my legs to look like hers? She wanted to be in the best shape of her life. What was kind of a tall order because she was already, in my opinion, in the best shape of her life. She was doing things and accomplishing things that most people 20 years her junior weren't even able to do. And then she made a funny request. The request was, she goes, I want to have the most stellar legs possible ever. And then I'm thinking about this right now and I'm kind of going, okay, this is a lot of leg work, but it's possible. I said, but we're going to have to do, in particular, a lot of lunges. You know, I'm a big fan of lunging. I can know what the benefits it's done if done properly. So came in to work out the next day and he said, hey, I know, I know how I want you to build those legs. I want you to train for a 5K. As I'm rowing, I'm like, what the heck is a 5K gonna do for me? And then he said, of lunges. And I looked up online to see, has anyone ever even lunged a 5K? And I looked online, never find anything of a 5K. I've seen people, plenty of people lunge a mile, but no one has ever attempted a 5K. And I figured, you know what? Damn, screw it, why not? Let's just go for it. It's never been done. We could be the first to do that. That's literally 12 times around a track. No, absolutely not. So I went home and I started Googling, how does one train for a 5K of lunges? And I just couldn't come up with anything. So the next day at the gym, um, I told him, I said, why not just a mile? I mean, a mile is pretty darn impressive, right? It was very interesting because we kind of went back and forth. She was trying to talk me out of the idea, and I was trying to talk her into the idea of doing this. He said, but a 5K sounds so cool, <laughs> and I'll do it with you. And finally, he told her, look, I'm, you're not gonna be by yourself. I will do this with you. I will train with you. I will go alongside with you because this is, as a coach, gonna be a new experience for me teaching someone or really coaching someone through the process of doing a very long physical event. Okay, maybe. We started training, just doing lunges, lots of lunges. A lot of the foundation was used to marathon training. In certain parts of the training, we would peak and then taper down. We'd peak again a little higher, taper down. Then we go again, peak in higher and taper down. Very similar to marathon training until the day of. <laughs> And about four weeks in, he asked if he could send out an email. 
that we were going to do this. And I was like, no way. No, because uh, I don't need this out in the universe because I don't even know if I can do it, you know. So a couple more weeks go by and um, I had gotten up to a mile and he asked me again, can we send the email out? And I was like, I mean, I've done a mile. Okay, yeah, you can put it out in the universe. So he did. Well, on that Sunday, we came up here and trained and we went 1.55 miles. I went home, sat in my recliner the rest of the day with ice packs on my knees. And I was like, oh gosh, what, what have I done? I agreed to this. It's out in the universe in this email. My body is saying, uh-uh, no way. The biggest struggle we had was actually more the mental game. We trained individuals to step on stage for shows or step in front of a camera to get very lean. And it's a way you have to train the mindset when you're going on very low calories or dieting for a show or dieting for an event. It's very much of a mental game. It's a completely different mental game when you're training for a four plus hour physical event because everything in your mind is telling you to stop. Your body is exhausted. like everything hurts and you feel like you're questioning yourself why the heck am I doing this how what sane person does this and as a coach it's learning to coach that mental aspect of it so the next weekend um, my daughter and her friends were in the kitchen and Lacey was so excited as she tells all of her friends that her mom is gonna lunge a 5K. And I'm not even kidding when I say she was so proud. <laughs> she was like just so happy and so proud and just boasting on how her mom was gonna do a 5K of lunges. And I was like, oh gosh, somehow I've gotta make this happen because I gotta prove to her that I can do it. So I went to um, my massage therapist, Debbie Gillespie, who is amazing, and I basically asked her, can you make this body work? Can you like fix this and help me do this? I will commit to an hour a week until this lunch challenge is over, but you've got to keep this body moving. And she was like, I got you. <laughs> and so every week she fixes what is broken and, um, and with her gift that God gave her, she literally has kept my body moving so that I can do this. One of the things we didn't want it to do is we didn't want to devote our entire life just to lunging. So we still wanted to do our other workouts, which are typically, you know, transformational style workouts, physique development workouts. So we still wanted to do that. But in other aspects, we made sure to kind of gear some of that training a little bit more to strengthening up the other muscles that we knew that were going to get exhausted. Legs, hamstrings, glutes, inner thighs. So we did spend a little bit more time doing more strength training in the legs, pushing the reps a little higher, pushing the weight a little heavier, because we knew that our legs are going to be getting succumb to a lot of stress. So we almost felt like, I guess you'd use the word, we needed to toughen them up a little bit. But not only were we doing very max effort style weight, um, but we were also going for very high reps, sets in the 20s and 30s, sets that burn just to teach us that, hey, it's okay, it's gonna burn, but you can keep going. And we spent a lot of time strengthening up the hamstrings, the glutes, and the inner thighs, because in a lunge, uh, when you're doing it right, it's not to say the quads don't work, but uh, you'll be surprised that uh, your glutes really start giving out pretty quick, and then your adductors, your inner thighs give up pretty quickly. Our training consisted of lifting weights and all that to make this strong. I needed more work for my hamstrings because um, we figured out that was um, also hurting my knees a little bit, that my hamstrings weren't completely developed yet. We have done um, lots of sprints and just a whole lot of lunging.
so the sprint training we did for two reasons. One, uh, to kind of keep ourselves trim, because uh, the less weight you're having to lunge, the easier it is on the body, the less reps you're having to do. So that was one reason. And then two, what people don't realize that is when you start doing HIIT training, like true hardcore HIIT training, and you're really sprinting it out, it's a mental game. Like your body is tired and it's exhausted and you gotta talk yourself through how to get to those sprints. And your rest is short, you haven't recovered, and you gotta go do it again. I would go up to community high school's track. I would do it in the parking lot there. Also found a beautiful trail in Farmersville um, where it's all treed and everything. And so I loved lunging um, in Farmersville just with the nature and the trees and the squirrels and the bunny rabbits and all of that stuff. I wouldn't even take my headphones. I would literally just disconnect from this crazy world and start lunging and it was hot, it was 100 degrees outside. I would be sweating, thinking that my trainer has lost his mind. But then I was thinking as I would fall um, from not having the balance nerve that I'm doing this and I am still alive and I survived so much and I have all of these new normals and if I can pull this off, if I can literally lunge a 5K without the balance nerve and without the hearing and all of my new normals, what is my daughter and my son, what an example am I gonna make to them? I feel I've grown through this process not only as a coach but also as a person because me partaking in the training with some of these workouts hitting four plus hours, it allowed me to really experience what uh, Dina was gonna go through. You're gonna have one part of you that's telling you to stop, and then you're gonna have another part of you that's telling you to go, and to learn that that's okay, that's normal. You're not crazy. Talking to yourself and talking yourself through that doesn't mean you're crazy. And it's okay to do that in your mind, to go that one more rep, that one more step, that one more lap. And as a coach, it helps me to better articulate how to do that to someone. And also as a person, it helped break down even in myself that I didn't realize some self walls, some barriers that I built around myself about my own physical ability, my own physical limitations. It actually broke those down to where I was able to see truly how much more stronger I really am than I gave myself credit for. I would have to start telling myself, you've got this, Dina. You're strong. You can do this. I would tell myself, do this for Lacey. Lace Lacey is expecting you to finish this and you're gonna finish this to show her that you can do anything that you set your mind to. Right around for me when I was hitting about um, the two and a half to three hour marker, that's when reality sets in. And what I feel at that moment is my legs are tired. My muscles feel tight in places. Um, I'm having to think about every rep. You know, I'm having to spend more time thinking about how to do this versus just completing it automatically. I start having a lot of internal dialogue. All right, man, like, you got one more step into you. Yes, we got one more step into us. All right, let's take one more step. And I do that step. And then I'll have that same internal dialogue again for the next step. All right, bro, you got this. You got one more step into you. We can we just one more step. That's all you need to do. Okay, I got one more step, and I'll do that next step. Some of my talk was, this is dumb. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Oh my gosh, I'm so bored. But then the other part of me was do this for you. Do this to show other people that you really can achieve things. You can overcome, you know, not having a balanced nerve. You can do whatever you set your mind to. And so those are kind of the self talks that I would have during when I was three hours in. Like, wow, this is really tiring, but you got this. There was that little part in the back of my mind that entertained the thought of, like, crap, man, like, what if I really don't make this? But then, at the same time, I realized that I have undergone more training just for this event than anything else. I'm too stubborn to quit. There's no reason I'm gonna quit. I will stay out there all day until I finish it. That's exactly what we preach here at Rowlett Transformation Center, is that you are stronger and you are better than you think you are. I do have thoughts about not finishing it, like what if 
my knee? What if something happens? I want to finish it. I'm going to finish it no matter what because I'm pretty darn stubborn. As silly as it sounds, I've lunged 5K up here at least a dozen times. I have already know what it's gonna feel like. I know what the first mile is gonna feel like. I know what mile two is gonna feel like. And I know the mental struggle that I'm preparing myself for after that two and a half, three mile marker. I keep visualizing that last little lap. I keep visualizing me going over that finish line and being able to, to just show people that I did it. Um, even though I'm nervous and five hours is a long time, it shows people that you really can do whatever you set your mind to do.